Hey there, Smooth A.D. Robles here, and you're watching A.D. on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. All right, baby. All right, all right. Well, let's get started today. Welcome to the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. I'm excited to be with you. Now, I wanted to respond and kind of analyze a very strange video. This is a video that I found shared by Woke Preacher Clips, and this is in one of his edits that he kind of edits it and provides some commentary. I like these, by the way, Woke Preacher Clips, so good job on these. But anyway, um, this is about Andre Henry. Now, Andre Henry, when I saw him post this video, I was thinking about, is that the guy from Twitter? The He used to always just spout, you know, white supremacy this and you know, whiteness that and colonizer, stuff like that, you know, and, and, and he was shared by a lot of Big Eva, you know, celebrity types, um, approvingly, and um, crazy stuff, I mean, wild, wild stuff, and I used to engage with him and all that, and he presented himself as a Christian, now, of course, the stuff he was spouting, there was nothing Christian about it, but he would present himself as a Christian, so I, you know, I took him at his word, but I always knew that there was, there was something up there, um, but it turns out, like, it, it's not just something. I mean, this man is a sorcerer. He's, uh, you know, one of these, you know, psychedelic sort of weirdos, and uh, allegedly. And um, he explains it here in this video and so many th revelations here. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But um, I want to just address this because I think, you know, it's easy to sort of dismiss the insanity of what Andre Henry is about to say here and also his. Uh, his co-host or whoever she is, jo Joanna something. She's one of these apostates that deconstructs people's faith and encourages people to deconstruct their faith. She calls herself a Christian atheist. We're going to talk about her as well. Um, but I just wanted to sort of reasonably respond to this and then make an application that I think is you know a little bit shocking, but I think is necessary to make. Um, so let's let's go into it. And oh, before I do, I want to also say this. And if you're new to the channel, um, you might not know this, but I've, I've not always been a Christian. I, became, I came to Christ later in life. I was already an adult, and I lived in New York City at the time. And um, my background, I've been involved in drugs. I've done psychedelic drugs. I've done mushrooms. I've done LSD. Um, I've done cocaine, you know, all that kind of thing. And I'm not proud of it, but it does allow me to get a little bit of a perspective into what this man is talking about. Um not trying to glorify it at all, but I'll give you a little bit of my story once we get into this. So um, this is Andre Henry, uh, woke church, I guess, e-celeb. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, let's listen to it. I stopped believing in God, I think it was 2016. Someone told me if I did mushrooms that I would believe in God again. So before, before we get into this in earnest, um, he says he stopped believing in God in 2016. He believes in God again, and someone told him that the way to do that would be to take a psychedelic mushroom. Um, so that's him. Now, the commentary that Woke Preacher Clips provides here, Andre Henry is an anti-racist activist, author, musician, and he's the former editor of Relevant Magazine. I'm sure people in this audience don't read Relevant Magazine. Uh, they don't get it for their kids and stuff. It's poison. Relevant Magazine is poison. It's allegedly a Christian magazine, uh, but it's poison. And this man was an atheist while he was the editor-in-chief. Um, no, not editor-in-chief. I'm sorry. He was an editor of Relevant Magazine. Let's continue. The version of Christianity that I received had like this very like strong, you're not supposed to commune with the dead, basically. People talk about connecting with their ancestors and stuff like that. That's something that was so foreign to me. They tell us not to do that, basically. And for the first time, I really asked the question, why would it be so important for these oppressors to tell us not to connect with our ancestors? Okay, so so let's 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 unpack that just a little bit. I'm sure I don't need to really explain this, but what he just said is that the version of Christianity he received was the version that says you're not supposed to engage in necromancy. In other words, 
you're not supposed to do a seance or a spell or guys, I, this is wild, but this is what he's saying. You're not, uh, you're not supposed to do a seance or a spell in order to communicate with dead people, your dead ancestors, whoever. And that's the version of Christianity he received. And he finally one day came to his senses and said, well, why would my oppressor, why would my oppressor uh, not want me to connect with my ancestors? So I, I'm assuming he's talking about necromancy here, because obviously, as, as Woke Preacher Clips mentions here, uh, connecting with your ancestors as far as understanding who they were, speaking with them, reading about them, you know, knowing the history, obviously that's not uh, banned by the Bible, but the Bible does say that necromancy is an, is abominable. It's an abominable practice. It's idolatry. It's not allowed. Um, it's demonic is what it is. And so what he's saying, though, is that that's the oppressor speaking. And so to, to, to Andre Henry, and this is what he is saying here, God is the ultimate oppressor. And and by the way, this he's at least being open about this, but but this is the this is the end result of all woke church stuff. God has to be the oppressor because see God doesn't play these partial games, right? God doesn't play these partial games. So if he makes a law and that law in uh, affects um uh, uh, black people more because they engage in the practice more or 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 Filipinos because they engage in the practice more, it's not an oppressive law. But you see according to their system that you'll look at the results to see if it's oppressive or not. That's not, that's not how it goes. That's not how it goes. So God, God is the ultimate oppressor in all of woke church uh, perspectives. But Andre's being very open about that. So he's, he's, it's oppressive for him not to be able to engage in necromancy. And um, I believe him. I think Andre Henry really does think that that is oppressive. Andre is a complete pagan. There's just no question about that. So um, that's what he's saying here. Woke Preacher Clips caught it. I'm sure you caught it. Um, to, to, to the woke mind, the Bible is oppressive. The Bible is absolutely oppressive. I mean, the Bible does not uh, ban the practices that the woke church thinks it should ban, and therefore God is the ultimate oppressor from their perspective. The role of this white God is to groom us into accepting oppression. That God is a projection of the most powerful. Right. They see God as... <laughs> and then, uh, he, right. He even thought what she was saying was whacked out. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so he said the, all the rules in the Bible that you read that we, you don't agree with, that's the white God um, engaging in grooming for oppressing you. So because you're not allowed to uh, engage in a seance and contact the dead, because you're not allowed to you know, do a spell and contact the dead, because that's a sin according to Scripture, that's actually, it's actually not a sin. It's gro- God is grooming you to in- accept oppression because the way to escape oppression is to talk to demons, I guess. Um, guys, this is, this, is, this is real stuff. I mean, I'm, what I mean is, this is really what Andre Henry thinks. This is a woke celebrity. This is really what Joe thinks. This is a, a liberal Christian celebrity. And a lot of people would want to play with this with kid gloves, but these two pagans here are demonic. They're demon-possessed. And so um, the reality is here that we need to accept that, that, that demon possession is a real thing, and this is an example of two people that are being influenced by demonic forces. There's just no other way to slice that. Let's continue because it gets even clearer. The larger version of themselves. You can trace it from the beginning of this to now. Naming like one of the first slave ships, Jesus. <laughs> they imagined that Jesus was a big colonizer, the big slave master. And now Jesus is a big police officer. I found that I don't believe in God at all, but I believe in Christ. And to me, Christ is the embodiment of divinity in me in you, in all of humanity. So I am, for all intents and purposes, I'm a Christian atheist. So So stop right there. Stop right there. So she's a Christian atheist. She doesn't believe in God, but she believes in Christ, and and Christ is the embodiment of the divine in her and you and everybody. And so so Christ is this, this is like this consciousness. I remember I read a book called Christ Consciousness uh, when I was um, when I was in New York, and um, it was just insane ramblings, right? It was just all nonsense, all completely made up about how, you know, Christ is, is everything, I'm using me, divine, it's all nonsense, right? But but this is this is what these people believe, at least these two people here. Um, and so, but I want you to hear the next part, because she says, 
for all intents and purposes, I'm a Christian atheist. Okay, that, that, that's, that's nonsense, by the way. You can't be a Christian atheist. I think everyone in this audience already knows that. But I want you to hear what she says about this, because this is very interesting, and I think she's going to be, she's slightly deceptive here, but, but she is going to give you a window into the reality of the situation. So remember, she just said, I, for all intents and purposes, I'm a Christian atheist. So I just tell people I'm a Christian to avoid all of the, what do you mean? That's impossible. You have to believe in God to be a Christian. Not really. You don't. No, that makes a lot of sense. So he's about to say it makes a lot of sense. It actually does. It makes no sense at all. But when you're demon oppressed, of course, the, the, demon, the demonic wisdom, of course, it makes sense. But she, did you hear what she said, though? She said, I don't tell people I'm a Christian atheist. I just tell them that I'm a Christian because I want to avoid confusion. I want to avoid the follow-up questions. What do you mean you're a Christian atheist? I want to avoid that just to avoid any complications. I think she's being deceptive, but there's truth there as well. You see, Joe, when she goes to a new place, a church group, whatever it is she does, I don't know what she does, right? And I, I, frankly, I don't care. But she wants to introduce herself as a Christian because she wants to subvert reality. She wants to get infiltrate an organization and spout woke nonsense, which is really the doctrines of demons. Like, the woke stuff is the doctrines of demons. They're preaching partiality as if it's a good thing. They're preaching against the law of God almost at every point. They're actually turning the law of God upside down to preach their things about reparations and about how whiteness is evil and stuff like that. So, so they're teaching the doctrines of demons, but they can't tell you that they're demon-possessed. So they say, well, I'm just, I'm just a Christian. But really, in reality, she's a Christian atheist, whatever that means, who believes in the divine consciousness of Christ and everybody and all that stuff. Like, like she, if she was open about that, you know, she, you would obviously have your guard up. But then, but she has to hide it so that way she can teach her woke demonic doctrines and you won't be any the wiser. Same thing with Andre here, right? Same thing with Andre here. The reason why uh, evangelical celebrities will retweet him is because at first he did not tell you that he was on mushrooms, right? He didn't tell you that he was engaging in necromancy. He didn't tell you that he was an outright pagan, but he wanted to teach you his demonic doctrines. And so he fooled a lot of people, even though the entire time he was consulting with demons about his doctrines. Now, let's continue because it gets even crazier sense actually i stopped believing in god as well i think it was 2016 these people believe that god is white and this is the divine person i've been interacting with so look at this in 2016 he stopped believing in god but andre was named the managing editor of relevant magazine in 2017 so so he was named the managing editor of relevant even as he was an atheist, a Christian magazine, he was the managing ed editor as an atheist. How did that happen? How did that happen? I'm assuming that the people who own Relevant Magazine and hired him didn't know he was an atheist. Maybe they did. Maybe they did, but he's telling us that he was. How did it happen? Let's continue. My entire life, and if that person is white, they are not real. Someone told me that if I did mushrooms that I would believe in God again. I had my first mushroom trip, it was a very spiritual experience, and I came out of that experience feeling like... Listen to this, so Andre is still listed on the staff page for Ron Sider's Christians for Social Action. This is this is a, a, a person who's very influential amongst Big Eva. Ron Sider, he's a Christian socialist. I believe Russell Moore counts him as a friend. Um, by the way, this is the guy who wrote the book that my, one of my favorite books was refuting, called... Uh, it was called Rich Christians in the Age of Hunger, but the book I like is called uh, Guilt Manipulators in uh, or, or Productive Christians in the Age of Guilt Manipulators. Ron Sider has uh, partnered with Andre, Andre Henry, the pagan, the the necromancer. The we'll, we'll talk more about it in just a second, but but this is this is you can't. When you're woke, you can't distinguish between friend and foe. You can't distinguish between demonic doctrines and Christian doctrines. Because otherwise, why would you have Andre Henry on your staff as a Christian? He's obviously not a Christian, but he's about to talk to us about how he started believing in God again. He's no longer an atheist. Great. Win. That's a win, right? Watch this. Well, there's definitely more than just material for me. 
obviously the universe. It's much bigger than us. We're connected to it. We're connected to each other. If you want to call that God, that language is fine with me. It did make the divine like much bigger, a little bit more approachable for me. Okay. So he took some mushrooms and then he realized that there's a lot more to life than just the material. He was a Christian before, allegedly, but then he realized when he took mushrooms that there's a lot more than just the material life out there. And so uh, if you want to call that God, he's open to that. I mean, you could, he's fine. not going to gripe with you if you want to call that God. I think that strongly implies he does not call that God. But there's, there's other stuff out there. There's, there's spiritual forces, whatever it is. Now, let me just explain something to you about mushrooms, because I've taken mushrooms. And I've taken LSD, and I've taken mind-altering substances of every type, essentially. Now, um, I've told this story before. Um, again, I'm not proud of it. I'm not trying to glorify it. This is not stuff you should play around with. But I remember um, when I would take mushrooms, we would uh, hang out and watch TV, and um, things that would happen on the TV, I couldn't tell the difference between it being on the TV and it being in my room. Now, I knew it wasn't real in a certain way, but, but I also couldn't really not see it. So in other words, uh, I remember watching a war movie once and uh, or a show or something, and you could feel I could feel the bullets flying and, and hear them and see them. Even, and I knew it wasn't real, but I couldn't not see it. Um, and it was still scary, you know what I mean? And so you know what I would do is I'd try to watch you know safer things on TV. and I'll, I'll never forget this for my whole life. Uh, I was watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air and um, you know, Uncle Phil is one of the characters on Fresh Prince. You know, kind of an authoritative father. You know, to 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 Will, uh, good good man. You know, uh, I was watching that because I figured it would be safe. I wouldn't be scared and all that. So so I'm on mushrooms and um, Uncle Phil uh, turns to me and kind of like leans out of the TV and points at me and he says, I don't forget what he says, but it's like you, like something like that. Like he was obviously like upset with me and trying to get me. And I remember I closed my eyes and opened them again, and he, it, was, it was fine, but it was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. I, I, I believe on that same experience, I also felt like, and I, I, it's hard to explain this, I, I knew it wasn't real, but it felt real. I felt like if, if, I, if I leaned my head back, that my head would fall off, like my neck would open up and my head would fall off. And I knew... Logically, but th this is what this is where it's weird because y you know that you're not thinking logically, even though you kind of still have it. Like it's it's hard to explain. Like I knew that that would that couldn't happen, but I believe that it would. Like so, I was keeping my neck down like this. I don't know if I've ever told this one before. Maybe I, maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. I was trying to keep my neck down like this, so it wouldn't I wouldn't lean back, and, and so th mushrooms aren't like a window into reality, right? It, it, it's actually non-reality. It's, it, it, you, again, you, you, you maintain a certain level of awareness, um, but your, your reason is gone. You're not thinking straight. And I think, of course, that there are demonic influences when you're engaging in that kind of activity that are there, um, but, it's, but it's not, it's unreality. It's illusions. It's, it's lies, because the thing is, demons follow Satan. Satan's the father of lies, and his demons follow him into that. They lie to you. There was the, My head wasn't going to fall off, but the demons had lied at that point. And because I took these substances, I was susceptible to it. Do you see what I'm saying? I was susceptible to it. And so there's nothing uh, holy about psychedelic substances. There's nothing real about it, um, except for the fact that it does really alter your mind. Um, this is not, this is not acceptable for a Christian. This is sorcery. That's what sorcery is. It's when you, when you have these substances and you're, you know, seeing things and crazy images and stuff, and you think that there's so much meaning to them. And at the time you're trying to figure it all. There's nothing to figure out. It's lies. It's evil is what it is. It's the opposite of wisdom. It's the opposite of sober mindedness. And so this, this is, this is, he, he's playing with demons is, is what he's doing. And Joe, whoever, is also doing the same thing. These people are straight up pagans. But somehow their teachings are being spread and agreed with and shared 
by evangelical leaders. And so we have to ask the question. We have to ask the question. How is it that we didn't see that these people were teaching the doctrines of demons? Because I know they weren't being open about it. I know when Joe meets you, she says, oh, hey, I'm a Christian. And then I know when Andre, you know, meets you, he says he's a Christian, probably. I don't know what he does. So they're not going to be honest with you because their father is the father of lies. So, of course, they're not going to be honest with you. But how can you tell that they're playing with demons on the side to teach them their doctrines so that they can turn in turn teach you? How can you tell? Well, you can tell because of the fruit, right? Like we didn't need uh, Andre to come out as a necromancer to know that he was teaching dangerous stuff. Maybe we wouldn't have known he was a necromancer, but we would have known that he's teaching the doctrines of demons. We didn't need Joe to tell us she's an atheist to know she was teaching the doctrines of demons. Like, I'm glad she did. It's more open. I think a lot of times these demons want to be known. They want you to know that they're doing things and they're teaching things, and so they can't help it. They're going to reveal themselves eventually. Um, because they're arrogant. They want to take credit for things. So so demons eventually will always reveal themselves. But right now, we've we got to think this through. There was a ton of evangelicals that did not sound the alarm. In fact, not only did they not sound the alarm about Andre and about Joe and about people like them, they agreed with it. They signal boosted it. And so, so we have to ask the question, and I think Doug Wilson in one of his most recent articles asked this question, and he has his take, and I, I, I slightly disagree with Doug on this, although I, I do think his impulse is good. There's three camps, right? There's, there's enemies that are just flat-out enemies. Andre Henry is uh, he's a necromancer, and he's proud of it. There's, en- there's, there's those that are, that are being fooled, and there are those that are enemies but yet not, have not yet revealed themselves. And I th- we don't have to wait for the demons to reveal themselves in order to make decisions on what to promote and how to handle things. Look, I'm not saying that everyone t- pr- promoting woke jo- doctrines is knowingly uh, teaching the doctrines of demons. I think there are some that are just fooled. I think there's a lot of naive people out there. But it doesn't actually matter when it comes to what you need to do. Because here's the thing. Let's just say I believe Russell Moore is actually one of these that eventually will reveal himself completely to be apostate, right? He Maybe he won't say, I was a necromancer, but but he'll. Re- I think Russell Moore eventually is one of these bad guys, right? I don't know that. I think that. I think one day he'll reveal himself. But the thing is, though, even if he never does, right? Even if he... So whether or not he's uh, doing seances like Andre Henry allegedly is... So if he's doing that, that's one thing. If he's not doing that, but he's still teaching the same things, it actually doesn't matter. You handle them the same way. You refute them. You call them to repentance. If they don't repent, you take someone else with you. If they don't repent, you take it to the elders. If they don't repent, you have nothing more to do with them. As as far as you know, they're not going to stop teaching the doctrines of demons, so therefore they're out. They might as well be doing mushrooms and engaging in necromancy. You treat them the exact same way, okay? You don't have to know what they're doing in secret, but I do believe, and this is the part that I think will shock you a little bit, I do believe that there are some major players, major players in the woke church movement, major players in the Great Reset movement. It's hard to even say it. I think that there are people like Andre, Andre Henry that are behind the scenes, engaging in necromancy, engaging in all kinds of things, psychedelic drugs, things of that nature, and they're um, waiting to reveal themselves, and one day they will. But again, hopefully I'm wrong. But if I'm wrong, it, it actually doesn't matter. We need to handle their error in the exact same way. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. God bless. Don't forget to tune in next week on Thursday for AD on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. just watched was recorded on Thursday or Friday last week uh, towards the end of the week 
And um, and since then, uh, over the weekend, I had a couple of addendums that I need to make. Now, the first one is uh, a tweet from Woke Preacher Clips. Apparently, Andre Henry, the subject of this video, uh, was very upset because he misrepresented him and, you know, the mushrooms and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's funny. So, so here's the, the, the message here. And he, he messages him and says, The one thing I'd like to say to you is that if you actually followed my work, you'd know that I'd considered myself an atheist for all of one afternoon in 2016 because I remembered the Exodus story in that moment, and it helped me to understand that God is not apathetic to systemic oppression. That was the subject of my medium series, The God and the Ghetto, The God of the Ghetto. Okay, so he's basically trying to kind of take back what he said because if you remember, and Woke Preacher Clips, you know, very clearly pointed this out, the, f- the first version of the story is that he stopped believing in God and that a friend of his said that he would believe in God again if he took psychedelic mushrooms. And uh, then he took the psychedelic mushrooms and he realized that the universe is more than material and if you want to call that God, then he's okay with that. And that's what he said. Uh, but now he's saying, and I think you know this is getting a little bit too much attention for his, for his liking, now he's saying, well, well, just one day for like a moment, you know, maybe like a couple hours or something like that. I stopped believing in God, but then I remembered the Exodus, um, and I realized that God actually cares about the oppressed, and so then I, then I continued to believe in God. And, um, you know, so I guess this is theoretically possible. So, like, maybe that, that afternoon his friend told him to take some mushrooms, and he did, and then that's when he remembered the Exodus. So, like, this all happened in one afternoon. That's really not how he presented it. Though, in the initial thing, in the initial thing, it was sort of like, well, I just stopped believing in God, and then I took some mushrooms later. Like, so I guess it's theoretically possible that th- both of these stories are true, although I don't think so. It certainly seems like he's trying to downplay the psychedelic, you know, sorcery that he was doing uh, to believe in God again. And then um, it's, it's, it's interesting, Moke Preacher Clips got blocked uh, because he responded to this, uh, this question. And he said, uh, when did you first take psychedelics? <laughs> and he got blocked. So anyway, so, so I just wanted to, to bring that to your attention, that he's disputing the story. So allegedly what he said on the Joe Lumen show, whatever it's called, is true. Uh, or maybe if you believe the second version of the story, maybe that's actually not true. Um, maybe he's just pretending to be a sorcerer and not really a sorcerer. I mean, it's, hard, it's impossible to tell. I mean, the man's obviously a liar, uh, allegedly. And so there you go. But I also wanted to add something a little bit more serious, in my opinion. This is also from Woke Preacher Clips, and this is a—it's weird. It's very weird. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the whole thing, and you, let's just listen to it. There's some commentary, so maybe I'll read his commentary um, from it as well, and I'll give you my own commentary afterwards. It is my privilege to introduce our speaker today. Dr. Glover is an ordained minister and currently holds a position so this is Dallas Theological on the Seminary. board of incorporate members of a place called Dallas Theological Seminary, where he also serves as a regent. We are honored to have Dr. Glover on the board and associated with DTS, and we're thrilled to have him in chapel today. Would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Frank Glover? So he's on the board, he's a, a professor, you know, whatever. So here's what he's going to say. I'm going to share with you is a journey of discovery. Most of us here can trace our lineage, our Christian heritage, through Europe. However, there are some of us who are of African descent and in the diaspora that trace our lineage in a different direction. And so I'm here to talk to you today about God's black children. Okay, so the idea here is that he wants... He wants you to be able to know your history as a Christian <clears throat> and learn from it. So there's a lot of believers in the past that that have done, you know, great work for the kingdom of God, and, and you know, we study a lot of them, but a lot of people, what, what the idea is here, but we don't really study the African uh, ones, the black ones. We leave those out because, you know, the implication is that we're all racist. So we leave out all the great black Christians of the past, which isn't really true, by the way. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously not true. But but anyway, let's uh, let's hear what he has to say. St. Mark was born in Sereni, Africa. His people had been there for over 200 years. And he's the apostle that wrote the Gospel of Mark. 
right. Donatus so, so, could be termed so the world's first. So what's interesting first. about that is so he, the way he starts off this speech about how we don't really know any of the people that are from Africa, he starts off with Mark, the guy who wrote <laughs> Mark, <laughs> which obviously people study Mark. Um, so it's just a very weird place to start. Um, anyway, people know about Donatus. Um, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> He talks about Donatus, who is a heretic. Like, we know about Donatus, but we don't celebrate him as a, a great Christian, you know, father because he's a heretic. And it's like, it's not like one of those heretics that, like, nobody agrees. Maybe he's a heretic, maybe he's not. He's a heretic. There's a whole heresy named after him. And so it's like, what what is the point of this, like, we, we know about, for, number one, he's trying to claim we don't know about the, these people. We do. But his examples are Mark from the Bible and then a heretic. But it gets worse, guys. Let's just continue. Liberation theologian, because he bore the full weight of the Roman Empire and never would deny Christ, and so he was martyred. By, by the way, by the way, guys, like, he doesn't mention in his speech that he's a heretic. He just he just leaves it out. It's just the same with the MLK fifty stuff. You know, they're great. What a great prophet of God. Remember Matt Chandler? But yeah, but but he was a heretic. He wasn't a believer. He used Bible verses and he used churchy sounding language, but he actually was an unbeliever. And so they they leave that stuff out. And and I just have to ask the question. You know. How much of it is just innocent oversights? I think of probably very little of it. And how much of it is very nefarious? It's just trying to, 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 to syncretize Christianity and, and, and actual believers with unbelievers and doing it for nefarious purposes. I, I wonder, but, but that's, this is not even as bad as it gets. Let's continue. Vita. As a teenager, she fell ill and went into a coma and died, or so they thought she died. And so they were having her funeral, and during the funeral, she woke up. That was some kind of funeral. (laughs) And she said, I saw a vision from God. Okay, so Kimpa Vita, Kimpa Vita. Here's what Woke Preacher Slip says. According to the most thorough English language biography of Kimpa Vita, almost none of this is true. In the very first page of chapter one of John K. Thornton's The Congolese Saint Anthony, we see Kimpa Vita did not have a vision of God. She had a vision of Saint Anthony of the desert, who said he was going to enter her head and preach through her body. She had this vision during a dire fever, but she was not presumed dead, and she did not wake up at her own funeral. So the, the made-up story is weird, and it's not true, but the real story is very, very bizarre. Let's continue. And God has told me that the Congo people, my people, are children of God. Whites are not superior or better in God's eyes. They're also black angels. Okay, so here is the commentary from Woke Preacher Clips. By the way, thank you for doing this research. Obviously, I would have missed this. I'd never heard of this woman before. And it's not because people are uh, racistly trying to keep Christians, uh, black Christians, out of the history books. It's probably because she's, well, we're going to see. Here's what he says. He says, Catholicism was already widespread in the Congo at this point. The controversy was not whether the Congolese could be saved, but whether there were any Congolese saints. Overcorrecting on this, Kimpa Vita claimed Jesus was Congolese and was born in the Congo, where Mary was a slave to a nobleman. Kimpa Vita's family owned slaves, by the way. No mention of her freeing them. The Black Angel's claim isn't in this book. She tells a missionary that there is no color in heaven. Angels is a title she gave to some of her acolytes. However, so the Black Angels are her followers. There's no, there's no color in heaven, but the black angels are her followers. The Congo kingdom must unite, and as children of God, Congo must be free. Sacraments don't save. Faith does. Before Luther and before Calvin, there was a revolution. Salvation by faith. 
Uh, okay, so let's let's <laughs> guys. I know this is I know I know this is unbelievable, guys. I, I I know this is just hard to understand. But he just said before Calvin, before Luther, there was a revolution of salvation by faith. Notice the revolutionary language. Notice uh, the claim that Kimpa Vita was uh, was actually um, on top of salvation by faith alone um, and all that kind of thing before Calvin and Luther and all that. But here's the fact. So Calvin and Luther both died 100 years before Kimpa Vita was born. So it's just not true what he just said. She said, she said, baptism, here's, here's the research, she says baptism, confession, plus good works, mean nothing without intention, which is a true critique of Roman Catholicism, but she did not argue this from the Bible. Her movement was based on direct revelation. She claimed to die on Fridays. She spent several days in heaven, and she would return on Mondays to share what she heard from God. She also said that Anthony is the greatest of all the saints, the second God who holds the keys to heaven. She claimed to make her followers possessed by the lesser saints. P.S. She continued to affirm the Pope's... I can't read that here. Something. So, let's continue. So, she was taken up to heaven on Fridays, and she would learn doctrines, um, and she would teach those doctrines on Monday. But before Calvin and Luther, even though they were before her, there was a revolution. By the way, let's let's not miss the fact that she's saying that she was possessed by St. Anthony. She would have her followers be possessed by lesser saints because St. Anthony was the greatest saint. He was the second god, apparently. I mean, um, this is is demonic, right? This This is demonic stuff. And she's being lauded as a great Christian, you know, maybe possibly even greater than Calvin and Luther. And, um, you know, uh, well, we're going to see. Well, this angered the priests from Portuguese because her message resonated so much, there were over 80,000 people in her congregation. That's the first megachurch. And so they said, we've got to get rid of her. And so... They charged her with heresy. They rounded up lots of sticks. They strapped her to a tree, and they beat her all day that she would recant her faith in Christ. She refused. All right, so here's what actually happened. The Catholics condemned her because they believed she was possessed by the devil. At this point in her ministry, KV had an affair with one of her acolytes. I guess these were the black angels. Because she preached chastity to her followers, she aborted the two resulting pregnancies. A third child survived the abortion drugs. She traveled to her hometown to deliver the baby in secret. When she was found out, she claimed that the baby was not hers, but St. Anthony's, that it was from heaven. So remember, uh, St. Anthony is the second god, and she, she's claiming, even though she preached chastity, she was obviously quite, um, let's just say it in a nice way, uh, quite loose. She had two babies that she killed. The, sec- the third she couldn't kill, so she had it and then claimed that it was God's own child, the, at least the second God's own child. She was encouraged to confess her possession by Anthony was fake, not to renounce Christ. So she wasn't told to renounce Christ. That would make no sense for a Catholic to do, because Catholics at least say they believe in Christ as God, so why would they want her to uh, recant her belief in the same God that they believe in? That doesn't make any sense. But she was encouraged to say, hey, tell everybody that you were lying about being possessed, which makes a little bit of sense. She insisted that the possession was genuine despite her fornication. Guys, I just want you to think, there's only a little bit left in this video, there's like a minute left. I want you to think... What would, why would, why would this pastor lie about this? Why? And so they lit the fire and burned her and her infant son at the stake. All right, so here's what really happened. Her son was spared. Only she and her lover were put to death. So 
the two fornicators were put to death, the son was spared. I've looked around at other books that mention Kimpa Vita to figure out where Dr. Glover may have received such a whitewashed version of her story. I found nothing that framed her bio this way. Let me know if there's a source I'm missing. So this is Woke Preacher Clips trying to figure this out. But even if there was such a source, so let's just give this, uh, this seminary you know, executive the benefit of the doubt. And he, he does have a source that you know, has a different story. You would think that with sources that contradict each other so much that you'd either— you know, one, you know, teach the controversy. Yeah, she's a controversial figure. You know, I believe she's done great things, and she was a a, a wonderful Christian, and uh, the, I believe that. But but there are people that think maybe she was demon possessed and and all that kind of. So, so like, you would think either you'd do that or you'd leave it out, considering the controversy, right? Leave it out of your message, considering the controversy. But he chooses not to. He chooses not to do either thing. In fact, what he chooses to do is to change the actual story to make it fit his agenda that we're just forgetting about these great black saints of the past. When we're actually not, because there are black saints of the past that are highly revered in Christian circles and have been for decades. So we're just going to end there. I think that's the end of, well, let's just finish it. Okay, so the best case scenario here, guys, is that he's just being tribalistic. You know, black equals good, white equals black, uh, bad, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to rip white people all day. Black people are going to be seen in the best possible light. And that's like, that's standard. That's the best case scenario. I mean, it's evil. It's partiality. We get it. It's lying. It's breaking It's breaking a, n- a number of commandments. Um, but, but the reality is that that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario, given the actual facts here of demonic, you know, kind of a cult being created. That's what, that's what uh, Woke Preacher Clips calls it. Um, but demonic revelation where you die on Friday, you get some demonic revelation and you teach it on Monday, your life, the fruit of it is just a disaster. You're killing children. Like, it's, it's, this is demon stuff. And the nature of that makes me wonder that, like I said in this video, who, who, who's What's going on behind the scenes and what's going to be revealed soon? I think that there is a, a very clear mixture going on right now of paganism with Christianity, and it's being more and more tolerated, and it's coming more and more to the surface every day, and we need to be ready for that and watch out for that. I hope you found this video helpful. God bless.